Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines. Another female journalist arrested in Egypt. Workers of Alcoa's San Cipria plant in Spain start indefinite strike. Trump administration targets China, revives Red Scare immigration laws. Bolivia's coup government opens doors to NGO intervention in domestic politics. And Communist Party worker murdered by Hindu fundamentalist groups in India. Now, first story on Sunday. Egyptian authorities arrested journalist Basma Mustafa while she was travelling to Luxor to cover the alleged murder of a man in a police raid last week. Mustafa, who works with the news website Al Manasa, had arrived in Luxor on Saturday. She had informed her colleagues about security forces following her. Following this, contact with her was lost for the next 24 hours. She was reportedly produced before a prosecutor at the Egyptian State Security Prosecution in Cairo and was sent to 15 days in judicial custody. According to some reports, her lawyers were initially unable to learn the charges against her as they were not allowed to attend the investigation. However, according to the AP news agency, she has been charged with spreading false news and joining a terrorist organization. Masa Mustafa has covered the death of a man in police custody in Cairo last month. She was covering unrest caused by another death of a man known as Abai Salravi, who was 38 years old. He was shot by the police in front of his home in Luxor at the time of her arrest. The Al Manasa website she works for is banned by Egyptian authorities for operating without proper permission. According to Mada Masar, an independent news outlet in Egypt, more than 500 websites have been blocked by Egyptian authorities, citing the same reason. Last June, Al Manasa's editor Nora Yunus was also arrested briefly after a raid at her office. She has been charged with running a website without proper permission. In our next story, workers of US based aluminium giant Alcoa Smelter in San Cipria, Spain, have intensified their protest against the closure of the plant. On October 4th, that Sunday, hundreds of workers of the plant and auxiliaries related to the plant started an indefinite strike. They were demanding job protection and government intervention to continue production. The jobs of more than 500 workers are at stake after Alcoa released to close it, they had decided to close its smelter in San Cipria, citing huge losses. The critics, a crisis faced by the workers intensified on September 27th, when negotiations between Alcoa and UK-based Liberty House for the sale of the plant failed. The San Cipria factory employs about 1,100 workers. 500 of these are involved in the production of alumina and 600 in the production of primary aluminium. The company has decided to lay off 534 workers at the primary aluminium plant, which is likely to affect hundreds of secondary jobs as well. Alberto Vilata, the head of the steel and basic metals sector of the Federation of Industry of General Union of Workers, that is a UGT, pointed out that Alcoa had already closed two, year, two plants last year and the plant in contention was the last in the country for the production of primary aluminium. In our next story, the United States has released new policy guidelines for residents or citizenship to disallow people with communist affiliations. In a notification issued on Friday, that's October 2nd, the US Citizen and Immigration Services stated that individuals with affiliations to a communist party or any other totalitarian party shall be deemed inadmissible for permanent residence or citizenship. While the guideline neither specifies the communist party it is targeting nor defines what is a so-called totalitarian party, it is seen as part of the Donald Trump administration's attempt to target China in the ongoing trade war. The notification published by the USCIS states that membership in or affiliation with the communist party or any other totalitarian party is inconsistent and incompatible with the naturalization oath of allegiance to the United States of America. This oath includes pledging to support and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States. The notification is based on a Cold War era US CIS policy manual that specifically prevents members of communist parties. The law itself dates back to the first Red Scare era immigration policies that sought to actively hinder entry for radicals, especially communists and anarchists. The same policy manual was also used by administrations to bar people associated with anti-colonial movements in Africa and Asia from entering or naturalizing themselves as citizens in the country. A prominent example was that of South Africa's African National Congress, which was deemed a terrorist organization until 2008. The ruling Republican Party of President Donald Trump has been pushing for measures to limit or altogether block means for Chinese nationals from entering the US. Previously, the Trump administration had discontinued a range of visas for Chinese nationals, including ones that allowed foreign nationals to study and research in STEM, that's science, technology, engineering, and medicine programs. In our next story, Bolivia's coup president, Johnny Nanez, has lifted restrictions on foreign non-governmental organizations from interfering in domestic, intervening in domestic politics. This marks a reversal of the pro-sovereignty policy previously implemented by President Evo Morales, who was overthrown in a coup last year. 
Morales has enacted, enacted the law in order to restrict NGOs, particularly the usual influx of them from the United States from intervening in domestic politics. On Friday, Johnny Nanez pres presented a decree stating that Bolivia is going to open itself to the world to contact with Western democracies and particularly those devoted to freedom, or so she said. In the process which spanned years, NGOs played a pivotal role in the coup against Morales. Such groups were able to funnel financing to right-wing ground actors from the far exterior. Such groups also took aim at the MAS government on false claims framed as human rights issues and notably during a series of fires in 2019. The silence of these same organizations to thousands of hectares burning under the Ones regime has raised criticism from across sections of Bolivian society. Following the November 2019 coup, it was alleged that NGO-backed operatives were using social justice language and progressive issues to subvert Bolivia's government and Morales' re-election campaign. It is also revealed that many actors receive direct or indirect funding from the U.S. Department of State via the National Endowment for Democracy to operate and further neoliberal interests. The movement towards socialism leaders said that NGOs don't actually defend the indigenous movement of Mother Earth. Bolivia's post-coup elections are just two weeks away and it is expected that the regime will continue to push through numerous last-minute laws as it also works to, by any means necessary, prevent the MAS from retaking power. And finally, on Sunday, a young leader of the Communist Party of India, Marxist, from the Trishur district in Kerala, was hacked to death by right-wing activists reportedly linked to the ruling Bharati Janata Party and allied Hindu nationalist organizations. The murdered activist, Sanu Piyu, who was 26 years old, was a branch secretary of the CPIM in the district. He was attacked along with three other young workers of the CPIM and the Democratic Youth Federation of India. The three others who were critically injured have been admitted to the hospital. So far, four activists of the BJP and its parent organization, the RSS, and another fundamentalist organization, the Bajrang Dal, have been identified in connection with the brutal murder of Sanup. According to the police, all four of the identified accused have criminal backgrounds. Reportedly, the attack was carried out by a gang of eight members. The attackers reportedly targeted Sanup and others while they were returning after making arrangements for food, which the DYFI, that's the Democratic Youth Federation of India, distributes at the Trishur Medical College Hospital every day. In all medical colleges and district hospitals across the states, food kits are being distributed for poor patients and their bystanders, bystanders by the DYFI, which is an organization of communist youth. Various local committees of the DYFI take turns each day and the members collect food packets from households that come under their area and these packets are being distributed at the hospitals. Despite the murder, State Secretary of the DYFI, A.A. A. Rahim, said that his comrades would ensure that the food packets are being distributed as planned. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from across the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.